Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make your Windows computer boot up faster from you know power off to power on. If you wanna see the written version of how to get this done, you can find a link to my website in the video description. So a couple things. First off, this video is broken down into chapters. Why is that? Uh, because this can be applicable in two separate situations. And I thought of this because I, I work as an IT manager in an enterprise situation. So one is consumers. Uh, in, you know, basically your home laptop, your home situation. That's part of the video is applicable to everybody, regardless of what your situation is. Once that part of the video is done, if you only care about your home laptop or home desktop, you're done. Maybe you can hit the like button and subscribe before you leave if you found the video useful. Now, if you're using a work laptop and you're wondering, why is my laptop so slow? Like, this is a brand new laptop my IT department gave me. Why is it so slow? Then you should watch the entire video from beginning to end because the consumer part may be really relevant to you. But I'll explain, even if you do all those steps, why it still might not work for you. Okay, so you can try them. It might not work. So... Let's dive in. So first and foremost, the, the one thing you want to do is make sure that you have a solid state drive. Now, most new computers only come with an SSD. Okay, there's a platter drive, there's an SSD. Uh, platter drives, which are called HDD or hard drive, are like literally spinning disks. I'm not going into this detail, it's a waste of time for this video, but the point is you don't want to have that as your primary operating system drive. If you have an older computer and you're thinking, well, it's just a piece of junk and throw it out, please don't contribute to e-waste. Also consider you could save some money. May, my computer over there, you can kind of just see it to the side, is a, running a 10-year-old PC with a 9-year-old graphic card. It still edits 4K video like a dream, okay? The primary drive running the operating system, which is Windows, is an SSD. I use uh, a SSD as my secondary drive for storing video backups that I edit for YouTube. And then the third drive is a hard drive. It's also a platter drive because that's just for dumping data. It, it works a lot slower. So that's number one, is the hardware. Is your hardware supporting it? Processors nowadays are so fast, it doesn't matter. It used to be a big deal, not as much, and same with RAM. Now it's more of, is your computer running an SSD or not? If it's old, if it's a newer computer, chances are it, it is already running an SSD. The next one is super easy, but a lot of people don't know about this trick. It's actually astonishing to me. So on Windows, what you can do is hit the start button, okay? Uh, so that, that could be the Windows button on your keyboard, or you're going to hit the start button in the bottom left, and just start typing start. And you should come up with a result called Startup Apps. I'm using Windows 11 IoT. Uh, Windows 11 IoT is a very unique version of Windows. Uh, maybe I'll make another video explaining how it's the greatest version of Windows ever. There's no bloatware, there's no copilot, there's no garbage trash. It's just barebone Windows. It's like uh, Windows 7 but in a Windows 11 format. What you basically presented in Startup is a list of services that literally start with a computer. So I have one password installed, you have Microsoft Edge, so on and so forth. What happens is this list is saying that all these applications here will start when your computer starts. The more of these that are on, the slower it will go. And it also tries, it, it's not always accurate, but it tries to determine how much of an impact it'll have. So for example, my VPN, when it starts up on my computer, has a high impact. That means Windows thinks Proton VPN will slow down the boot up of my computer. This is not true. My computer starts up in like seconds, okay? But it tries to do that. But notice how you can get rid of some bloatware. I hate Microsoft Teams. I don't want it. I don't care for it. So I have it so it's turned off. It does not start up with my computer. Same with Edge. I use Brave Privacy Browser. So that's another thing you can do to dramatically reduce it. Another thing to keep in mind for startup services, you might have your antivirus included in there, okay? Do not turn that off. You want to have your antivirus included in there. But what you'll notice is that my antivirus is Windows Defender. Why am I using Windows Defender? Third-party antivirus solutions usually cost money and in some cases they can they include adware to make you buy services of theirs if you're using the free version but in addition to that they just slow down a computer like crazy because upon boot up they have to start up their own services sometimes they have like a, a initial scan for every boot up it, it just slows down the computer like crazy the reason i don't use it anymore and I haven't for a while is because i just don't do stupid stuff on the internet <laughs> It's as simple as that. Just don't do anything dumb on the internet. If a website looks suspicious, don't click on it. If an email looks sketchy, don't open any attachments. Don't open any links from the email. It's as simple as that. If you don't do anything dumb on the internet, you can't get viruses. It's very difficult. And Microsoft Defender does a decent job. Now, there's a lot of articles and YouTube videos detailing how people compare Windows Defender versus like Avast and AVG and all these other antivirus services. The problem is, these videos will not give you any concrete information because malware uh, code, malicious code, is evolving and changing every day. So the results are changing every day as well. 
as long as you don't do anything stupid on the internet, you'll be fine. I use Windows Defender as built in. It's super lightweight. The next thing is a little bit tricky, but it's re if you haven't reformatted in a long time. What that basically means is you haven't wiped and reinstalled your operating system Windows fresh all over again in a long time. Some people might go years without doing it, like myself. And what happens is that during that time, you might install a lot of software you don't need. They don't start up with the computer, but they have like these background services that even that startup functionality cannot de detect. That start up menu that we went through, it might not detect it. And there's a whole bunch of registries and all this trash running in the background and it really bogs things down. It might not even slow down the, the startup of computer, but it could slow down maybe you just opening up your browser or Excel or LibreOffice. Like I use LibreOffice. I don't use Microsoft Office anymore. I use LibreOffice. It's free open source software. You should definitely check it out. Basically, what you want to do is check which applications you have installed. Are they just consuming resources and you don't need them anymore? So how do we check what we have installed? Hit the start button again and again type add or remove. Okay. And you see it's one of the first results. If that doesn't show up, worst case scenario on the start button, go to settings and here, and there's a search function in the settings menu. And here you're going to type add or remove. And you're looking for add or remove programs. Now you can do this in control panel, but Microsoft is solely trying to get rid of it. So we're not going to do that. And here you just kind of scroll around like, Hey, what do I have installed? Do I actually need this junk? You know, is it consuming resources? Ah, yes, my arch nemesis, Microsoft Teams, I have to uninstall that. Uh, the problem is it keeps coming back with Windows updates. It's really annoying, so it's a never-ending battle. But you get the idea. You're looking for stuff like, well, man, what haven't I used in years, and can I get rid of it? There's a couple more things people don't realize could be slowing down the computer as well. Um, but it, it, it could also impact just general day-to-day -day performance, even when the computer is booted up. One is you have low space. People don't realize that when you run out of space, the computer just kind of starts creeping. Even if you have an SSD, it just really slows down. So try to clear space, leave a few dozen gigs of data free because it gets caught up with Windows updates and stuff. The other one is that maybe your drivers are out of date. Drivers are basically pieces of software that allow the um, hardware components to communicate with the operating system, Windows, efficiently and understand, okay, this is how you've been updated and I can make you more efficient in your process. Now for enterprise consumers, everything I said is applicable. You might be wondering, well, I've done all that stuff, but some of the stuff I can't uninstall. This is not possible. It's, it's blocked. That is done intentionally by your IT team. Okay. Um, in an enterprise situation, you're more likely to get hacked, right? you're more likely to get hacked as a company than an individual person because companies could hold millions of dollars versus the, indivi the individual Joe Schmo at their house might not have a lot of money in their savings and, and digital resources. They might not have important data they care about. But a company, if they lose all their data through a ransomware attack, um, it, it could cost their entire business to go bankrupt potentially. So what a lot of companies do in the IT team, we've done this in my experience as well, we've, we've deployed software solutions where we deploy EDR, which is basically uh, endpoint detection response. It blocks malicious code, but uses machine learning. It, I'm not going to get into all the details. Uh, some is like VPN you might have installed, but VPN can also do posture checks, which basically means in layman's terms is checking, is your computer allowed to connect to the VPN? Is this actually a company laptop? Uh, some platforms like uh, Zscaler are zero trust platforms. I'm not going to ex explain what that is. It's not relevant to this video, but it is such a secure platform. It does numerous checks, not just about network, but it has a DLP involved. Are you sending company sensitive files externally in an email when you shouldn't be? Basically, there's all these security tools you, you're not meant to remove and it's purposely designed to scan your computer nonstop, which inadvertently slows it down. Better to stay employed safely uh, than to get hacked and lose your job. So I hope you found this video. So if you did, be sure to hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe. It literally helps my channel grow. And I'm making this third video here on a Friday night at 9.37 p.m. because I have to go to work and stuff during the day. Uh, so if you want to show some appreciation, hit the like heart button. It's super thanks button just below this video. And that's pretty much a wrap.